While Houston has long been known for being the center of the country's energy industry, fewer reasons existed for travelers visiting downtown on weekends until now. Looking, looking. It all started in 2000 when the NFL announced Houston would be the host city for the 2004 Super Bowl. We landed that in 2000. It gave everybody a target date. We want to be finished with the revitalization of downtown. $300 million rail line that runs from here downtown to Reliant. Uh, you know, six new hotels. We do have the second largest theater district and the fourth largest museum district close to downtown and in downtown. But it's that entertainment wow factor you need. And Main Street has given us that. As word got out, investors chimed in trying to capitalize on the new historical downtown. Tax incentives help visionary investors take the lead. One such group, investors in the new hotel icon. The challenge, taking a 12-story, 100-year-old former bank building and transforming it into a trendy urban hotel. Total investment, $35 million. Has it been worth it? I think it's paying off, the whole city of Houston's paying off. You could see on a nightly basis where in the past our occupancies on Fridays and Saturday nights weren't as high uh, due to corporate business coming in through the week and pe people leaving the city on the weekend. We pretty much sell out almost every Saturday night. John Zotos of Pete's Dancing Marlin saw the business boom coming and jumped on board early. So we had the light rail, then we had the Super Bowl, and then we had the All-Star Game. And that really broke in the downtown area. Now we have uh, a vibrant nightlife, a great streetscape, day or night. It's Down the road at the edge of the theater district, another business now thrives. Artista Restaurant, located inside of the Hobby Center for Performing Arts, used to cater mostly to theater goers. The great restaurant reviews, along with awesome views, have made it into a popular destination for those seeking a critically acclaimed meal with a view. Well, I don't think there's any better view in town, especially uh, uh, at a restaurant. The interesting thing, since this was a new building, was uh, you know no one had ever seen this footprint before, this view, so it's absolutely spectacular. While Houston's downtown historical district is now becoming known as the new hotspot for entertainment, locals say it's just another phase in the ever-changing history of this great southwest city. I got to hand it to these folks out here that, it, you know, put in a little investment, the city cooperated. It's landing business that's going to last Houston, we can see, until after 2015. Tequila Jalisco may look like many other sleepy little towns covering the Mexican map as locals pass the time in this quiet central Mexico town of 35,000. But not far from the town, Zocalo is one of the most recognizable company names in business, the headquarters of Jose Cuervo Tequila. We began producing tequila in 1758, even though it wasn't until 1795 when the king of Spain, Carlos IV, gave us the permit to produce and sell tequila. And that's when we considered the birth of Jose Cuervo in 1795. Unlike the slow pace of this little colonial city, the pace inside one of Mexico's largest companies is anything but slow. The company operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, producing a whopping 230,000 liters of tequila each and every day. The state of Jalisco has been the center of the world's tequila industry since the 17th century, distilling an estimated 15 million annual gallons of the alcoholic beverage and distributed around the world, mostly to the U.S., Germany, and England. Archaeologists say agave has been cultivated more than 9,000 years. Tequila wine was first distilled as a drink called pulque by Spanish conquistadors. In the years since, the tequila has become a symbol of Mexican pride and culture. The process includes stripping the 60 to 100 pound plant, then exposing the heart. The pineapples, as they refer to them, are then steamed inside giant ovens for as much as three days. The next step is extracting the juice type of substance from the cooked agave plant. The extraction is then brewed in giant copper kettles as tequila doctors then measure temperature levels and monitor the alcohol balance. After the brewing process, the tequila cools off as workers constantly monitor contents. The liquor is eventually saved in barrels anywhere from a few weeks to several years, thus the aging process begins. Today, just about all of the world's tequila comes from the state of Jalisco, and particularly the city of Tequila, 35 miles west of Guadalajara, where it is said that the mineral-rich red soil, 7,500 feet above sea level, is best for the agave plant. 
The blue-green colored maguey plant is the raw source for the liquor, which mostly has a lifespan of 8 to 14 years, depending on soil, climate, and cultivation methods. The more mature the plant, the better for fermentation and the better the natural sugars and flavors. Some tequila lovers say the good tequilas rank up there with the best liqueurs of the world. Cheers for Chivas. Okay, Chivas. <laughs> I've been able to see and sample different tequilas, the higher-end tequilas, which are, to me, in the same class as some scotches that you'll just drink straight, and um, they're very smooth, uh, very high quality. The tequila industry has suffered a couple of setbacks, but distillers say production will go on as long as the demand is there. A new government tax combined with bad weather over the last few years has affected agave harvesting. The combination of both has contributed to the rising price of tequila. But distillers say these are minor setbacks, as production will continue to meet the world demand for one of Mexico's most important national products.